I am here. Can y'all hear me? Everybody hear me okay? <clears throat> okay, here I come, y'all. All right. Can everybody hear me okay? Put a one in the chat, please. If you can hear me okay. I had to unplug. Okay. I had to unplug everything. Yesterday was um Pat's birthday. And... um. For those who are new here, my new subscribers, for those who do not know, Pat is um, a friend of mine who she lives in my basement. She rents out my basement. And so um, yesterday was her birthday. And so we had like a dinner party here. And so, you know, I had to get some stuff out the way for the party. And so I had to hook everything back up. So I just want to make sure everything sounds good. All right. Okay. Let me say hi to everybody coming in. What's up, C Golden? Hey, Duchess Royal. Y'all were the first two I saw. And Cool Game. I think Cool Gamer too. Mystic Rain. Did I tell you you won? You won day three of um the 12 days of Christmas. You won day three. I pulled your name out of the box. If I didn't already tell you the other day, please email me and let me put it in the chat. Email me at RB the podcast at gmail dot com email me um put uh 12 days of christmas day three in the subject line so i can keep it straight so i know what i'm doing um and um give me an address you don't have to give me your your government name i can send it to mystic rain that's fine and i need a address and it won't go any further trust me i don't even hold on to that stuff y'all know i can't even remember stuff from hour to hour so um but Please um, do that. So you congratulations, you won, okay? Morgan, Andrea Rogers. Hey, Diane. Hey, Superstar Graham. Hey, Katora. L Love. Mwah. Kazmin, it's lit today. Roll with Tita through DC during lunch and just hopped off Gabor's live into this one. I love Gabor. And didn't I tell y'all Tita's a fun, Tita's a good time. I, I, she's getting a lot of subscribers because of everything that's going on with Mia. But she's really a good time over there. You do her while she's doing her Uber and running her errands and stuff. Hey, Miss Bay thing. Lemon Kush, what's up? Hey, Kaya. Is it Kaya? Am I saying it right? I am Kaya. I hope I'm saying it right. What's up, little sis? Danny, I need to talk to you. And I, I just need to talk to you. And I'll talk to you. I will. One, you know, eventually I'll remember to call you, girl. But I have something that I want us to do. Um, I know I never got with you about the 12 days of Christmas, but what I want us to do is bigger than that. So hold on. Come on, try. Oh, thank you, L Love. Hit that like button. Hey, Ganika Thomas, Kazmi, Miss um, Mia. Who am I missing? Sharice Woods. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, China White? Hey, hey, you guys. Okay. Making sure I get everybody. Making sure I get everybody. Hey, cross country, cross country cruiser. Hey, Meg. Yes, yes, yes. I said it right. Good. Okay. Girl, you know you better call me. That's right. Tita is so sweet and such a good name. I love her. I love Tita. Hey, what's up, Tracy? You're not that late, girl. We just get started. I'm late today. So listen, 
Um, members, 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 y'all be on the lookout um, for a live sometime in the next 24 hours. It's, it ain't going to be long, but it will be members only. I have had a rough day. And I'll do a story time, but it's going to be a members only story time. And only because I'm going to be telling, for me to tell this story time, I'm going to be telling y'all stuff that everybody don't need to know. So anyway, but it's been a rough day. That's all I can say. It's been a, a doozy. Okay. Um, I have a quick unboxing and then we got some stuff to get into. So I will be picking, picking a name out of the Jack Daniels box. Before the end of this live for day four of the 12 days of Christmas. We will be on day four of the 12 days of Christmas. But this unboxing, and the reason why I'm doing the unboxing, this unboxing is coming from um, the gift for day four. So whoever gets their name pulled today out of the box will get something from this website. They will get something off of this website. So... Let me show you guys what's in the box. Let me show you what's in the box. Now, oh, you know what? Oh, yes, it is. Okay, okay, okay. So the gift is from Sincerely Yours, Nadia. And if you guys do not know, she, I love her. I love her. I love Sincerely Yours, Nadia. I'm going to put her, can one of my mods put her website in the chat, please? www.shopsyna.com. And that stands for Sincerely Yours, Nadia. Sincerely Yours, Nadia. Can one of my mods grab that and put it in the chat, please? Um, this is, um, she's small business, black woman, and these are all natural products. These are all natural um, products. And she has everything from hair care to skin care to candles um lotions and soaps and every month and i used to order it every month but then i got to the point where i had so much stuff um, i had to kind of chill for a minute but every month she has a um what just happened uh-uh lord something just happened with my tv um every month she has what's called a surprise box and um because her stuff is um seasonal because her stuff is seasonal Every month it changes because um, she uses natural, um, she grows a lot of the things that she, what did I do? I'm sorry. So my TV just went blank and I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my TV. Like it literally just went blank. Um, thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me put that up there. Um, but a lot of the, the ingredients, she grows herself in her own garden. And so every month the box is different. The soaps are different. And she usually has, I think it's like five soaps. But I don't think, yeah, it's usually like five soaps. And then there's a surprise gift. So that's why it's called a surprise box. But it changes month to month. So let me show you guys what I got. Um, hey, Karee, what's up, love? So let me show you guys what I got real quick. And then we're going to get into because we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. So her packaging is always beautiful. You get this nice little box. You just placed the order. Thank you, Janae. Thank you. Thank you so much, love. Now I got to um, place me an order myself because I usually order stuff for my kids from Avon. I usually get them um, the hand soaps. I need, a, I need to place that order so I can get it before Christmas, yeah. Um, yeah, what is going on? my tv what in the world is going on with my tv all right i fool with that when i get off here so here are the soaps you see there so let me show you what i have i can smell it as soon as you open the box you can smell it let's see what i have i have african black soap african black soap and you can see you can see the ingredients you can see that she cuts it herself. She makes the soaps. And she actually has a YouTube channel. If you go over to her YouTube channel, you can see her. Actually, sometimes she'll come on and she makes, she'll talk to people while she's making her products and stuff like that. Mother's Live. Oh, Lord. Dragon Fruit. I had to catch it later. I didn't know Mother was live. I didn't get the notification. Spearmint Tea Tree. Mm, oh, that's good, too. Oh, that's good and strong. It's reminiscent of Irish Spring. Y'all remember Irish Spring? Remember how strong Irish Spring used to be? But I can smell the spearmint. 
This one is called 50 Shades of Melanin. I know that's right. And again, you can see, look at that. Look at that. 50 Shades of Melanin. This is called Carrot and Rosemary. Carrot and Rosemary. And this one is called Love and Light. Love and Light. Oh, this smells good too. Mm. So, and let me see what my surprise gift is. So you get six soaps and then you always get a surprise gift. So let me see what my surprise gift is. Look, it's like a little cupcake. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's, it looks like a bath bomb or something. Oh, look at this. Look, y'all, it looks like a little cupcake. Look at that. Oh, it smells good. I don't know if this is soap or bath bomb. It's really cute, though. And look, this is how it came packaged. Isn't that cute? I think it's soap. I think it's soap, but that's so cute. Okay. So somebody will be winning something from her website, okay? That is what you will be winning today. It's something from Nadia's website. What is going on with my TV? Okay. Is it bad? I'm sorry, y'all. It just went blank, and I'm just trying to figure out why it went blank all of a sudden. Y'all, my TV been tripping. It's not the TV, though. It's direct TV. It is really tripping. Okay. Let's get to something. All right. Let's get to these. We got a lot. Hey, Mr. Willie Brown. How you doing? You got, isn't that cute? That was so cute. Okay. It's a lot going on, y'all. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. So, let me just start from the beginning and work my way down. First of all, now, this might be under... The category of, of shit we did not ask for. Um, for those who are new here, we have a segment here that we call Stuff We Did Not Ask For, a.k.a. Shit We Did Not Ask For. And if you are a member, you have the emojis. Now, this, this might be an impromptu shit we did not ask for, okay? Terrence Howard said he retiring. I don't think I care. Do y'all? Do we care? I mean, I don't think I care. Okay. All right, then. I'm going to just go and put that out there. Because I don't think I care. Matter of fact, I hope he does. I mean... Uh-uh, Danny said, I thought he already had. <laughs> the best, he's talking about something, he feels like he's giving us the best he's got to offer of acting. Sir, what? Like, I don't remember you playing Othello on Broadway. Like, I don't remember you giving us, like, a Scarface-type um, performance. Like, I don't remember you um, winning an Oscar. Like, what? which performance, per se, are you saying was what did it? Which which performance is what did it? I mean, was it was it the the broke pimp in Hustle and Flow? Uh, was it the good for nothing music executive in uh, Empire? I mean, was it the ain't shit best friend in the best man? Like, tell me which one of your acting jobs was what you felt like was the pinnacle of your acting career. That you you just you exhausted. Like, I mean, when I look up and I see the Denzels still giving us maybe one movie every two years, when I still, you know, when I see the Sam Jacksons still giving us some good shit, you know, Sam is on Broadway right now being directed by his wife. And when he's not doing that, he is down in, you know, um the Marvel universe giving us his best Nick Fury. And when he's not there, he over in the Star Wars universe giving us a good old Jedi, you know, mind trick. Like what? Which performance was it, Terrence? He was good in Lackawanna Blue. He was good in some of his roles. I'm not saying he, I, listen, I'm not saying the man never gave us nothing. I'm just saying, do we, okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop because I really don't have no beef with Meg. I mean, mm, Lord Meg. I don't have no beef with Terrence. I'm really just clowning. I like Terrence Howard. 
he's giving us some good stuff. I just don't care. I don't think I care that he's retiring. Um, and and you know another thing I think it is all these people always talk about how they're gonna retire and they don't go nowhere. Like they be like I'm retiring. But then they don't be going away. Like one of the few people that I think retired and we never saw them again was Sean Connery. Sean Connery was like, I'm out. And I don't think we ever saw Sean Connery again. But for the most part, people retire and then they be coming back. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Shout out to Arkansas's young, the youngest mayor ever elected in U.S. history. He's 18 years old. He said he goes east down to the Arkansas. He said he goes to live with his mama. I'm okay with that. Like, he's a black man. I'm okay with that. Like, I'm not even mad about it, bro. You know, I feel like whatever happened down in that Louisiana, that Arkansas town, first of all, you won in a runoff election. So the fact that you even tied with whoever the next person was, it, it just... He was on Broadway. He was he was cat on a tin roof. I still really well good for him. Janae said, I was said I was retiring yesterday, child. People always be saying they're gonna retire, honey. They always be talking about they're gonna retire. I wish I could retire. Shit. Anyway, moving on. Moving on, child. Moving on. Please come and hit that like button as you come in the door. It's 83 people in the room. Shout out. To the 83 people in the room, please and thank you. Hit that like button. We have an update. If y'all remember the other day, I told y'all that um, the mother of Chloe, which is Todd and Julie Chrisley's um, baby, a uh, grandbaby who they adopted, her biological mama said that she wants to try to get the custody back um, since um, they're going to be going to jail that she should have been given first right, I guess, because her being the biological mother. And I was like, unless there's something fraudulent with this adoption, they have legally adopted Chloe, which means that they are her mother and father and they do not have to consider you. I mean, it would be nice, but they don't have to do that. So they have responded and let me read you what they had to say. This is what they have said. Todd and Julie are saddened by the unfortunate and misleading narrative currently being portrayed in the media regarding Chloe. The couple says in a statement exclusively shared with people, Jessica Doyle, the family law attorney who Todd and Chrisley used, I mean, Todd and Julie Chrisley used during their adoption process for Chloe exclusively tells people that Johnson's public statements are simply not legally correct or even valid. I handled the formal adoption of Chloe by Todd and Julie Chrisley. Angela Johnson's parental rights were terminated. Remember, we said that her parental rights were terminated when she voluntarily surrendered her parental rights to Todd and Julie on March 24th of 2017. She has had no contact with the minor child since 2015. Girl, Todd and, to, Todd and Julie Chrisley don't just have custody of Chloe. They are her legal parents through adoption. I have reviewed the public statements made by Andrew Johnson, and they are simply not legally correct or valid. Listen, they better leave that girl alone. I said that the other day. I said... Unless she can prove that they lied to her, they duped her, they misled her about custody of that baby, they have legal custody. They And they said that. They have legally adopted. They don't just have custody. They don't just have visitation. They have legally adopted. They are her mother and father. What I find interesting is you are concerned now five, almost six years after the fact. It. If the adoption was legal in 2017, it is almost 2023, ma'am. And I understand that there's a whole legal situation going on and now they're going to jail and whatever, whatever, whatever. But you have had, now, I mean, I can, I'm only going by what the statement says. Ma'am, you've had no contact with your child since 2015. She only know who you are. I mean, because the girl is 10. So if you have not even been visiting your daughter, if you have not even been 
um, trying to still be a part of your daughter's life for the past six, seven, eight years, and she's 10, ma'am, she will probably walk past you on the street. And I hate to say it like that, and I ain't trying to be mean, but ma'am, ma'am, she will probably walk past you on the street. Yeah, and what I and all I was saying was if there was a legal adoption, which it seems like there is. Now, the only thing is if she's going to say, "Oh well, you know, I didn't have legal representation and they misled me, and I didn't realize I was giving up my parental rights." But again, it seems to me that if you didn't think you were giving up your parental rights, if you thought that they just had custody, then where you been for the last 10 Christmases? Where you been for the last 10 birthdays? Where you been for the last 10 spring breaks? Summer vacation? Hell, Memorial Day cookout. Like, where have you been? I could see if you have still been a part of this child's life and you maybe misunderstood something. But ma'am, they said you haven't had no contact with your child since 2015. Your child was two. Two, three-ish. Because I think Chloe is 10, 11-ish. Ma'am, I'm sorry. I, I, I just don't see how you come up now and now you all of a sudden you I've been wanting to get custody back. When? Girl, when? I can't with these people sometimes. I can't with these people. Prayers to Celine Dion. She went public that she is suffering from a um, a nerve, a, a neurological um, disorder that is affecting um, her walking and even her voice. She said that all she knows how to do is sing. Well, not all she knows how to do, but all she, you know, this is all she's ever done. I mean, remember Celine Dion was a child prodigy. She's been singing since she was a, a you know, a, a a a child child. And so we're going to send prayers to her. Y'all know I suffer from um, uh, um, neurological disorder that affected me, which is why, remember I told you guys before that I, you know, I was in a wheelchair for a while and I had to learn how to walk all over again. So I definitely understand. And a lot of times there is no rhyme or reason. There's no explanation. It just comes out of nowhere. And honestly, they really have no explanation about it. You know? So we're going, you know, send prayers, send them prayers, mm-hmm. send them prayers. Okay. Um, hold on. Hold on, hold on a second, y'all. I'll be right back. While I'm gone, can y'all hit that like button, please? Um, moderator, give me a count. Can my moderators give me a count? I'll be right back. Give me a second. I had a girlfriend whose daughter was diagnosed with the SC thing about how many years ago? Okay. She's been going through so much these last few years praying for her. I'm so sad she lost her husband and her health is failing. Yeah. And she has kids. I mean, her kids are probably teenagers now, but still she's got kids. And like you said, her husband died, you know, when he was sick. And that's always hard to go through that. When somebody has a long illness, it's always hard to go through that. So and I mean, who doesn't love Celine Dion? I mean, I love Celine Dion. You know what I mean? 86 people in the chat and 47 likes. Okay, can we please uh, go hit that like button, please? If we can get over 60 likes, that would be great. All right. All right. So I wanted to just send out prayers. Cardi B says that the reason why y'all haven't gotten a new album is because of her anxiety. She said that everybody... They always nitpick everything she does. And so she has become her own 
worst critic. She's recorded a whole lot of songs, but she has not uh, brought herself to release it yet. And I can understand that. You know, they always say the sophomore jinx. Um, a lot of times that happens to music artists that their first album does so well that they're scared to put out a second album. And a lot of times the second album does flop only because of anticipation. And I think, unfortunately, at this point, Cardi has waited so long to put out a second album that no matter what she puts out, it's just not, it's, it's people are going to look at it as a fail. Um, and that's going to be unfortunate. I mean, look at Michael Jackson. He put so much tre- pressure on himself after Thriller. There's no way he could have, there's just nothing he could have done to top Thriller. Like it was just, it was a juggernaut. It was a phenomenon, you know? And it's the same thing with Cardi B. I'm not, I'm, and please, y'all, I'm not comparing Cardi B's album to Thriller. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, it was, it was, there was no expectation for Cardi B. So when her album blew up, when, when Bodak Yellow blew up and then she put the album out and it blew up, there was no expectation for her, but now there is an expectation. And so I think no matter what she puts out, people are going to, if you like Cardi B, you're going to probably buy the album. And even if you don't like the album, you're going to listen to it because you're a Cardi B fan, right? If you don't like Cardi B, it doesn't matter what she puts out. You're going to find a way to be like, it's horrible. It's terrible. Oh, my gosh. So I feel bad because she kind of is and she can't, you know, she's damned if she do and she damned if she don't type situation, which is unfortunate. But, girl, put the album out. You didn't put out, you didn't already put out about seven singles. Just put them singles on the album with about four more songs. You'll be all right. Girl, you will be fine. But I know that's easier said than done. Um, but, yeah. Anxiety is terrible. I also need Cardi to go to therapy and work on her self-esteem. She worries too much about other folks' opinions. But you know what? And I agree, Kazmi. But you know what? I was I saw the other day she did a live and she said that we've been talking about this all of this plastic surgery, plastic surgery. She said she actually went back in August and she actually got some plastic surgery reversed. She said she took some of the silicone, whatever the the butt shots that she got put in her butt, she actually got some taken out. Um, and she said it was very painful and it wasn't now what I think she probably did was she took the cheap shit out that she got done when she was a stripper and probably put the expensive stuff in, but baby, whatever. I do agree that she needs to, because I ain't nobody going to tell me looking at Cardi B's ass that it ain't something artificial up in it. But I agree that, um, oh, thank you, Diane. But I agree that she definitely needs to get to a point where she's like f these people f your feelings and i'm gonna do me because i think again i like cardi i mean do i think that she's the best rapper in the world no (laughs) but most of the people out there aren't you know most of most of these rappers are not gonna because because it's the era that i grew up in and it's the music that i grew up on most of these rappers out here ain't gonna outdo in my mind who i think are, are great rappers right um, but I like her. I like what she puts out. So unfortunately, it's like you damned if you do and you damned if you don't. And so, girl, stop worrying about these people. Because they're going to find a way to hate. They're going to love it or hate it, child. Well, they're going to love it or hate it, child. Well, mm, where are we going to go next? Where Cardi B at? Let me, oh, I already put my line. Okay. Xavier, if you don't get out of my chat with that bullshit. Exactly, Abby, she's fun. You know what I mean? Like, she's fun and I like her. Like, it's no, it just is what it is, you know. Because that's like Meg the Stallion. I like Meg. Now, can I listen to Meg for 10 hours on a loop? No. But I like her. I still listen to her first album too, Kazmine. Hey, Superstar Grams, I speak to you. I don't know if I, I don't know if I spoke to you. Abby, you know Xavier is trolling child. Ain't nobody fooling with him. He trolled the child. He trolled it. Um, where are we gonna go next? Well, since you brought Nicki Minaj up, let's go on and go there. Now, listen, I, I did a quick drop on this yesterday. It seems as though the civil lawsuit between Kenneth Petty, aka Nicki Minaj's husband. And his victim, a.k.a. Judith Pugh, or Julianne Pugh, they have a civil lawsuit. The judge has ordered them into mediation. Now, she's suing him uh, because she said that he's trying to intimidate her or something like that. I don't know. I just 
just think it's crazy that a judge said you have to go to mediation with the person that is a that is convicted of committing a crime against you even though this is a totally different lawsuit even though this is a, a civil case and that was a criminal case and for the type of crime that it was i am really really feeling some kind of way about the fact that the judge was like yeah y'all need to go sit down in front of each other and try to hash this out she is literally suing him for harassment and suing him for intimidation because of the lawsuit i mean because of the conviction of the crime i'm not understanding why y'all thought that was a good idea that she should have to sit in front of her accuser and mediate any damn thing now the judge did say oh well it doesn't have to be in person i don't give a damn if it's in person or through a computer screen why should she have to subject herself to having any kind of contact with this man i don't understand it i don't understand it i i, I don't agree with it and i don't like it and y'all know i did the quick drop yesterday y'all know that the damn nikki fans was all up it child them nikki stands was all in my comment i said y'all just y'all would defend a bad decision all day long y'all will defend a bad decision I would love to be just my lawyer present because I refuse to be in the same room with the person who assaulted me. Right. And I mean, I guess you could, I, I, they should make that a, a situation. You know what I'm saying? They do a little too much for me. I'm not that big of a fan of no human. Child. What in the world? This is irritating my soul. Nikki needs to care about her legacy and cut him loose. It's her birthday. And instead of celebrating her as the GOAT, first of all, she's not the GOAT. Xavier, please stop. Nikki is not the GOAT. She's not. She's not. No, sir. She's a great rapper, but she is not the GOAT. I'm sorry. Uh, moving forward. Um... I'm so sad that y'all feel that way. Do they have to be face? To yeah, they have to be in mediation. I mean, when I went to me, okay, so I took somebody to small claims court one time and we went to mediation. We were literally in the same room at a table sitting across from each other. Now, because of their situation, like I said, the judge did say that they could do it via a Zoom link, but they're still in the same room. I mean, if they're via, I mean, if they're on Zoom, they're not in the same room, but they're, he's in the room and she's in the room and they're together and they are mediating but she shouldn't have to pay for an attorney so that she doesn't have to talk to him so that an attorney can speak on her behalf y'all I mean, know what i'm saying now she seems like a goat when she speaks you know what <laughs> oh ooh, sorry y'all but anyway child so that's what's going on with that child I just think that that's disrespectful and i and the judge has to know the history because that's part of the lawsuit so the judge has to know the history and i just think that's very um if it were me i would probably look into filing a complaint against this judge i mean i would have to get an attorney to really explain it to me because i just feel like there are certain situations where ex where um exceptions have to be made and that certainly would be in a situation where an exception would be made to say you know what well, we're not gonna make her sit in the same room with this man y'all know what i'm saying i don't know like she shouldn't have to talk to him period especially since part of the reason why she's suing him is for intimidation and um harassment like girl anyway like did the judge read the case why would you force me to talk to the person who tried to intimidate me into recanting his assault of me right it's no different than the pill cosby accusers the, the pill cosby. <laughs> the 
the courts have never had a good track record of protecting and defunding victims. I, I, I agree with that. Child. So anyway, and the fact that the Nikki Stans was in my comments defending it, I said, y'all, I said, God forbid any, that y'all ever get hurt, child. I just, that is a mess. All right. Since we're talking about legal cases, let's talk about the Tory Lanez, um, uh, Meg Thee Stallion case. Let's, let's talk about the update on that. So the update on that case, as we see it, I told you guys that Kelsey, Meg, former best friend, was called to be the prosecution star witness. Now, I didn't see anything about her being called as a hostile witness, but if you guys remember correctly, Meg and her are no longer friends, and she claimed that Meg was lying about what happened that night. So I find it interesting that she would be the star witness for the prosecution. It seems to me like she would be the star witness for the defense. So maybe in her official statement to the police, she said something different. I don't know. Um, but that will be interesting. Now, I also online today where somebody said that she's supposed to be testifying tomorrow. But I thought that the opening statements weren't even until Monday. I thought they were only doing like administrative stuff and seating the jury. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the case actually has officially started. But I thought that opening statements weren't until Monday. So there's no way she could be testifying tomorrow if opening statements aren't even until Monday. But I could be wrong about when opening statements took place. Opening statements may have already happened. But um, they decided if Nikki was found with the knife in her hand, she said, you you right, Abby. you right, Abby. Um, Kia said, if I was her, I would say one of my stipulations is he stopped denying what he did. I don't care if that meant I took a few dollars. Mm. She should include her attorney fees. She's going to be a hostile witness. She got to be. Because if she's trying to say that what Meg said happened didn't happen, I don't know how she could be anything but a hostile witness. You know what I'm saying? Now, what's also what we also found out was that the detective that took Meg's report that night, child, this is a mess. I need y'all to follow me. The detective that took Meg's report the night of the incident, he has some DV situations going on in his private life, which has led him to lose his job as a, de as a police detective. So that now he has not been arrested. But the accusations must be serious enough that he lost his job. And as a result, the prosecution is now not going to call him as a witness. Because, of course, the minute they call him as a witness, then it opens up the door. And, I mean, can you imagine what Tory's attorney would do to that detective who hit? Can you imagine? So the, def the defense attorneys went to the judge and was like, well, we need to talk to him. He's a part of our case because they're trying, they're, they're, part of their case is trying to say that he botched the report, that he did some things wrong, which led to yada, yada, yada. So they need him to testify. They needed him to testify. They needed to open up that door. And so now they're going to call him to the stand. I said, boy, this case is taking more twists and turns and ups and downs and arounds and arounds, honey. Hey, Harold, how you doing? I said, this is a whole situation. So, when the case gets, and that's why I don't think the actual case has started because we haven't heard, I've been following the tweets and the people who are actually in the courtroom and they have not spoken on any actual testimony yet. They're only speaking on things as it relates to administratively getting out of the way. Who's going to testify? Who's not going to testify? Now, allegedly, uh, Corey Gamble, who is Chris Jenner's boyfriend, and Kylie Jenner have been um, slated to testify. Because remember, the art, well, A argument started at Kylie's birth or uh, pool party. I think it was for a birthday, but I'm not sure. But I know it was a pool party. <laughs> That's what I thought, Bat. People in the see people don't be knowing what they're talking about. Well, 
Why is the defense calling him to the floor? Would the prosecution flip that into saying that the officer has a bias in these types of situations? Well, no, they, the reality of the situation is, had he not gotten into this situation, he was supposed to testify on behalf of the prosecution. But the defense, part of the, what the defense has been prepping for is to say that he botched the report and that he probably fudged some things or maybe even flat out lied. So him not testifying now is throwing a monkey wrench in, in their reasonable doubt. So they need him to testify. So they went to the judge and was like, wait a minute, the prosecution doesn't want him to testify, but we do. So now we're going to call him as a witness. And the judge was like, okay. As much as I love Meg, I'm only giving this case a small amount of my attention. I feel like we heard most of it. But see, that's the thing, Morgan. I don't. Let me tell you why I care about this case. Two reasons why I care about this case. Reason number one, I really need to hear the testimony of what happened. And I'm going to tell you why. I don't understand how we got here. And what I mean by that is this. It seems like people are so determined to want Meg to be wrong, to want Meg to have done something, to want Meg to have. I don't understand how we got here that Meg became the bad guy. I, I just don't understand it. And what pisses me off even more about the situation is when people split hairs. Again, I was reading today online, and again, people in the tweets, well, we, well, what if he just shot at her? He didn't actually shoot her. Since when is that okay? Since when, since when is that a defense? Well, she just, she said that he shot her, but that's not what happened to her. She had glass in her foot. It wasn't a bullet. Never mind the police, never mind the, the doctor and the hospital report that said bullet fragments was in that girl's foot. Never mind all of that. But I don't understand how we got to this point where people are defending Tory Lands and they are condemning Meg when we know that there were only four people that night that were involved and only one of them people limped away and again do i think that tory shot meg yes but even 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 if it was only fragments it was concrete glass i don't care it is all the result of him in my opinion and i just don't understand how we got here why would this girl make this up? And at the end of the day, something happened to her. And I don't understand why people are so quick to dismiss that. I don't understand why people are so quick to dismiss that something happened to her. She's the only one that limped away that night. She's the only one. And I don't. I just don't understand how we got to the point where we're okay with that. I, I, I just, like, people have been really nasty about, about this. Thank you, really, B, because people are playing games and following behind this man for no reason. I used to roll my eyes when I would hear people say that people do not protect black women after, after the last few years. I see it's completely true. Why would Meg lie about who shot her? Abby's still trying to deport that man. She was, hold on. She was in... <laughs> I need to hear the truth too. Instead of the gaslighting and splitting hairs crap, people go out of their way to justify anything when it comes to somehow they the people they love. And that's really what it boils down to. People hate Meg Thee Stallion for whatever reason. I don't know what she did to these people. But now all of a sudden, and he has a violent record. It's literally because she's a woman. Yeah, I, I just don't understand it. I just don't. And again, like I said, what incentive does she... What incentive does she have to say that Tory Lanez did it over, let's say, the driver or over her best friend who she still... Here's the thing. Her and that, her and Kelsey fell out after the shooting and they have not been friends since. They haven't made up. At least publicly, they haven't. They haven't made up. Hell, she even dissed Kelsey on her album. Why wouldn't she... If she was going to... Why wouldn't she say, you know what? 
at the time she was my friend and I was trying to, you know, cover for her and defend her, but Kelsey was the one that did it. Like you, she's, she, there were only four, let me say this again for the people in the back. There were only four people there that night. Meg, Tori, Kelsey, the driver slash bodyguard. What incentive does Meg have to lie on Tori over the bodyguard? If the bodyguard has shot at her or shot her, why wouldn't she just say he did it? If it was her best friend who she's no longer friends with, best friend is the one that said Meg is lying. So why would she say Meg is lying if she was the one that did it over Tori? Why would she incriminate herself over the person that's getting ready to take the fall? I would shut the hell up if it was me. If I was the one that really did it and she's lying and saying that somebody else did it, I don't have nothing to say. I ain't got shit to say. What would I say? No, she lying. It was me. So, honestly, I need to hear the testimony. I need to hear. And the other thing is there's so much stuff on the internet about what really happened and what didn't happen. I want to know the I want to see. I want Now, when she did um, Gail King, Child, Gail King pulled the medical reports. And the medical report, and again, we're not talking about Jason Lee. We're talking about Gail King. Gail King ain't gonna lie for Meg, and Gail King ain't gonna ain't gonna sugarcoat it. If that police if that not the police report, because the police report, she admitted she lied to the police. So let's throw the police report out. Her medical report. If the, the report from the doctor at the hospital said something different, Gail would have been like, girl, let's not forget who get let's can we can we not forget about Gail and the R. Kelly meltdown? Gail don't be playing with these people. Gail, don't, she was like, Robert, Robert, it wasn't R. Kelly, Robert, Robert, if you don't sit your ass down and finish this interview. So she's not going to let Meg get away with no song and dance. She's going to be like, Meg, I, I know you went through something that night, but ma'am, I, I read the police report. I mean, I read the doctor's report and the doctor's report doesn't say anything about a bullet. It says it was glass. Like, Hello? exactly back and i'm like y'all just gonna sit there and act like y'all didn't hear that woman say that she admits she lied to the police she said she lied to the police because she didn't want to get him in trouble y'all gonna forget y'all gonna sit here and act like y'all didn't hear her say that we're just gonna sit here and pretend like we didn't hear her say she lied to the police thank you lauren she admitted she lied to the police y'all she said it she said it she said it was the damn doctor the doctor show. Oh, it must be some med. It was. Oh, it must have been some 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 anti med people in the room. Child, I don't went from 122 people in the room to 99. Who they done mad at me? But anyway, I don't care. But she said I lied, and the doctor came in and said, No, 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 <laughs> oh, no, ma'am. This not glass in your foot. And once the doctor came in the room with the police. The doctors are, le Janae, you still in here, baby. The doctors are legally obligated to report bullet wounds. And once the doctor told the police that, that's, that those are bullets in her foot, she had to tell the truth. They mad she didn't continue to hold the lie and chose to protect herself instead of a black man that victimized her. You better say it again for the people in the back, Abby. Let me put that up on, you, you better say and that's all I got for that. So we're going to follow the trial over here. And I'm going to give you the updates. And listen, if it come up that Meg lied, then I say, y'all know what? That's I, I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm disappointed because I was here for her and I was defending her. But at the end of the day, I don't know her. We're not friends. She's not my daughter. She's not my sister. She's not my mama. If she lied and they prove in court that she lied, I'm going to be disappointed. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to tell y'all that I'm dis disappointed. And we're going to move on to the next thing. And anybody who want to say I told you so, then I'll take it because you told me so. But I just don't believe that's what's going to happen. And that's just my opinion. I don't believe that's what's going to happen. I don't believe that's what's going to happen. You're not fooling no doctor or nurse, plus their obligation to call the police when a gunshot or stabbing victim show up in the ER. They're not, they're not already there. Right. Mandatory reporting. Right, Janae. Thank you. Yep, yep, yep. Megan's yeah, her story's been because she really ain't changed. Her story really hasn't changed. Now you ain't lying about that. Her her honestly, her story has not changed. And that's the truth. 
All of them kept changing their story, child. And I don't even know why. Like, I don't understand what the purpose is of, of her... Sorry, y'all. But anyway, so we'll we'll just keep it, we'll keep it pushing, y'all. We'll keep it pushing. All right. I guess we'll keep this. We'll just stay in court, honey. Patrick Clark, the man who was accused of shooting rapper Takeoff, he was arraigned in court the other day. Child, he tried to tell the judge that he need five thousand dollars from the court to pay for a private investigator to prove that he's innocent. Now listen. I'm all I'm all here for him defending himself and proving that he is that he is not guilty if that is if that in fact is what it is. But I ain't never heard of nobody going in and telling the judge he needs five thousand dollars to pay for his private eye. He said the private eye already took a pay cut and he don't have no more money because his family spent all the money by uh, um, retaining a lawyer to defend him. Listen, you're not the first, last, or only person that couldn't afford a lawyer or family. You know, had fish fries. And go fund me to pay for a lawyer. But I ain't never heard of nobody telling the judge, let me just go ahead and get that $5,000. <laughs> it's not funny, y'all. But I was, I read that and I was like, what? They can do that? <laughs> I didn't know we could do that. Like, I know you have a right to an attorney. Like, they'll get you an attorney, but I ain't never heard them getting you a private eye or, or giving you a voucher for the private eye. Sir. So that is not how, that is not how any of this works. I, I need you to know that that is not how this works. I ain't never seen that before in my life, y'all. No, he said that the guy took a pay cut and that he was going to try. But again, with private eyes, it's usually a certain amount of dollar, a certain amount of um, per day plus expenses. So maybe the five thousand dollars was the was the retainer. Usually, your lawyer gets the private eye. Yeah, like on Matlock, he had um, he had the two black guys. The one guy that just died last week. Mm hmm. Child, he better have Ray Ray and them do a fish fry and make that money. You know, he better get his mama to pass the plate down to the church. I hope his mama go to the church. Child. All right, y'all. Well, I guess I buried the lead. Brittany Griner is, is out of jail. Brittany Griner has been uh, released. There was a prisoner exchange. The arms dealer that we had talked about before um, was um, released. Congratulations to Brittany. I'm glad that she is home. Um, I don't have any ill feelings about her being home. I promise y'all I don't. Um, but at the same time, I told y'all before, I wasn't crazy about them doing the arms dealer exchange for her, but it doesn't matter. It happened. It's a done deal. She's home and I'm happy she's home. That's all I got. Um, I told you guys, I don't know if you guys noticed or not. Um, when we first, we've been talking about this case since, since the day it started, I told y'all that Brittany Griner's face will remain on the thumbnail for the tribe meeting until she came home, and I have kept my promise. Brittany Griner has been, I don't know if y'all noticed or not, but Brittany Griner has been on the thumbnail since the day we broke the case. I said she would be there until she got home, and she has been, and she is home. I woke up to the news this morning. Like I said, I'm glad that she's home. I just, I, I'm not crazy about the exchange for her i'm just gonna tell the truth i'm just gonna tell the truth but i'm glad she's home and that's it i'm gonna just leave it there all right we got a couple more stories then we're gonna get out of here you guys we have a um 
Now we have a shit we didn't ask for. Now y'all tell me if we asked for this or not. Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know if we asked for this. Remember, for those who are new here, it's a one in the chat if it's a yes. It's a two in the chat if it's a no. It's a three in the chat if it's a hell no. Now on this one, I'm gonna have to give y'all a four. I'm gonna have to, a four if you just don't care one way or the other. I feel like Abby is gonna be in the category of a four. Ab Abby's usually in the four category if we're gonna be honest about it. But anyway, Jackie Chan announced today that there is a Rush Hour four coming. He has confirmed that there will be a Rush Hour four. He said that they are in the process of writing the script now. How do we feel about a Rush Hour 4? Now, let me tell y'all something. I was here for Rush Hour 1. I will still watch it. I still think it's absolutely hilarious. Rush Hour 2 was one of the better sequels because we don't always get good sequels. But I think Rush Hour 2 was a great sequel. Rush Hour 3 is forgettable because I don't remember it. I can't tell you nothing about Rush Hour 3. Hell, I didn't even know there was a Rush Hour 3. I remember Rush Hour 1. I still remember that little girl in the back of the seat singing Mariah Carey. It is still hilarious. Um, I, I I I still remember um Rush Hour Two when he was over in China. I remember them being in that damn massage parlor fighting them the men in their towels. I just kept waiting for Chris Tucker's towel to fall. It just never did. Um, but I promise y'all, I can't remember nothing from Rush Hour Three. I'm gonna have to go look it up and watch it. Okay, I see some fours. I see some threes. Okay, Abby said that I should name four after her. That should be called Abby's Choice. <laughs> Bass says she'll watch it with her niece and nephews. Okay. Rush Hour 3 was a Western. I don't think I've seen Rush Hour 3. Now that we're talking about it, I don't think I've seen it. Oh, Jonathan, I hope you feel better um, soon, love. Rush Hour 3 was in France. The diplomat's daughter was grown. Y'all know what? I'm going to have to go look at it. See, let me, I'm going to have to go find, I feel like I'm going to have to go find it and watch it this weekend. Because I don't remember nothing about Rush Hour 4. Nothing. I mean, Rush Hour 3. Nothing. Hmm. Yeah, Chris Tucker, I'm sure Chris Tucker's going to be. It, if if they were going to do a Rush Hour 4 with no Chris Tucker, then they don't need to call it a Rush Hour. They could just call it another Jackie Chan movie because, I mean, what would be the purpose? But anyway, that's that, y'all. That is that. All right. I don't even need to go too deep into this. Wendy Williams, y'all, I feel like every time we have Attorney Simone on the show, like literally... We talk about all these legal cases and then the stuff comes out. So we talked about, we kind of gave a little update on the Wendy Williams case as far as Kelvin was concerned, him saying he needed her money and we cleared that up. Um, and then we found out that her son is getting ready to get evicted from his $2 million apartment. Now, this is my opinion. Let me preface this by saying this is my opinion. This is my opinion and my opinion alone, okay? I feel like all of this shit started with little Kevin trying to pay his rent. That's what I think happened. I think whatever triggered Wells Fargo was a combination of little Kevin, little Kevin, and big Kevin. I think big Kevin was down in that bank acting a fool trying to get into her accounts. Okay? And I think little Kevin was trying to use her American Express card to pay his rent. And I think those two things triggered an alarm internally that made them say, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on with, what's going on with Wendy and her money? And I'm going to tell you why I feel that way. When Wendy first, Kevin did, Kevin did a tell-all interview today. He confirmed exactly what you predicted that he was giving Wendy's Micro doses of her substance of choice to be able to hurt a fuck. That's what I had said. That's what I had said, y'all. And that don't mean that just because I said it, that mean it was right. 
But that's what I see. Uh, and I believe him. Now, I ain't going to say I believe a lot to come out of Kevin's mouth. But that I believe. I 100% believe that. But I'm be honest with you. I believe that that's how they met. I don't care what love story she twists and turns. I believe that's how they met. I believe they met because she, he was out there dealing and she was buying. I believe that's how they met. I believe that their relationship has always been a co-pendent relationship. Because the thing I read, I read him say um, the other day, I read a, um, a little, a little, I guess it's a snippet from the interview. And he said that him and Wendy should have divorced 10 years ago. But he said that Wendy has known about Shireen for years, which we all, not all of us, but I believe that. I believe that the only reason why Wendy, I believe the only reason why Wendy did anything is because we found out about Shireen and that baby. I think the baby is what pushed it over the edge. But I, I, I mean, we saw it in the movie. We saw in the movie that she found out about Shireen before she'd actually divorced him. And I believe that's part of the reason why she never wanted to divorce him. I believe that's part of the reason. They had a very codependent relationship. <sighs> they wouldn't stop the payment of rent, but if Big Kevin was there with the sticky fingers, they had to block everyone. Right. So what I think, let me tell you what I think happened. If you look at the timeline, this is what I think happened. When Wendy first rented that apartment for Lil Kev, it was a $2 million apartment. Listen, I ain't mad about that. I mean, I know we can pick that apart, but let's be clear. The, the the young man has lived a life of luxury. And I'm not and I'm not gonna make Wendy apologize for that. Wendy worked her ass off to afford nice things and to afford to be able to do nice things for her child. White folk do it all the time. They kids live in pay for apartments, pay for houses that the parents use as tax write-off, use as rental property, all of that. So I ain't mad at Wendy Williams for renting her son a two million dollar damn apartment down to Florida while he's in college. I'm not mad about that. She According to Kevin, she had every intention of buying the property. She paid for one year's lease up front with the security deposit. Now, the security deposit was $20,000 by itself. I believe that, too. I believe that Wendy told him, listen, we're going to go ahead. We're going to pay for a year's rent. If you like it, if you're still in school and you want to stay down here, I'll buy it. Because, again... It ain't nothing for her to add another piece of property to her portfolio. She can write it off as rental property and keep it moving. What's up, nephew? Hey. No, it's not $2 million a month. Jonathan, no. It wasn't $2 million a month. It was only $100,000. Well, not only, but it was $100,000 for the year. It's not $2 million a month. Okay. But, no, the apartment was worth $2 million. The apartment was worth, it was, it was, it was um it was worth two million dollars. Okay. His lease was up. His mama wasn't doing too well. We know Wendy was going through her health crisis. We know Wendy was abusing substances, and we know that happened because she put herself in rehab, or somebody put her in rehab. So we know she was doing that. Lil Kevin was her caretaker. Lil Kevin knew she wasn't right. So Luke Kevin took her American Express card. He called down to Florida to pay his rent for the year, just like his mother had done the year before. I don't think he was trying to steal or take advantage of his mother. I think he was taking care of the bills as he saw fit. But because his no good daddy was also trying to get into those accounts and trying to do stuff that he wasn't supposed to be doing with Wendy's money, trying to take advantage of her not being well. I think those things together trigger the investigation, and that's where we are now. And I do, and I believe Wendy's representative, when Wendy's representative says, Listen, we've submitted the paperwork to the financial advisor, the person that's over her money, and we're waiting for them to approve the expense. Unfortunately, they didn't approve the expense and enough time for him not to be evicted from his apartment. Because remember, Wendy's money was in limbo for a couple of months while they waited for the court to figure out what to do. So if his rent was due in February and this started around that time, she didn't go to court until, what was that, May? 
they didn't put a conservator on her money until like May. So by May, he was already four months behind on his rent. And like we said the other day, the conservator is going to pay her bills, her mortgage, her car note, her car insurance. Paying rent on her adult son's apartment, it's up to the discretion of the person who's over her accounts whether they're going to pay that bill or not. And if they believe that he's one of the people that's trying to take advantage of her, they ain't going to pay that bill. Because they're going to say, no, nah, you've been trying to, you're, you're one of the people that's trying to take advantage of your mom. Why would we pay your rent? If that's what they believe. And I'm not saying I agree or disagree, but see, that's the problem when you put other people in charge of your shit. Right. And I do believe that now, O Street. So that lady was looking out for Wendy the whole time. I think she was. And at the time, a lot of us were side-eyeing and was like, oh, Wells Fargo and how they going to do that? But the more we learn, the more we realize, hmm, maybe Wells Fargo wasn't wrong. Maybe Wells Fargo wasn't crazy. Maybe this woman was looking out for Wendy's best interest because shit is starting to look real, real fuzzy. But I do not think, but he is a dependent. No, he's, he's. He's a dependent because he's he's still in school full time. But again, if you're a financial advisor and you're over her bills and her finances, they're not going to approve $100,000 for his rent. They're going to say he could get a cheaper apartment in a nice part of town. It doesn't have to be a, a, a multi-million dollar skyscraper in Miami or not Miami, in Florida, because I don't think he's in Miami. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I agree with what you're saying, but, and I do not think that her son was trying to take advantage of her. I don't. And I don't know all of the details, y'all, but just based on what I've pieced together, it looks like the money he was trying to get was to take care of expenses. That's just my opinion. I wish they could have chosen something more affordable. Two million is a lot. And if Wendy was already unstable. Yeah, I mean, we don't know when her health really started to decline. So maybe she wasn't of sound mind when she decided to run a $2 million apartment for him. You know, he's a dependent because he's probably, because he is a full-time student, he's probably still on her taxes. But he's over 18. Because he's like in his third year of college. Mm -hmm, the baby yeah exactly lauren that baby was it the baby was it little kevin should have just paid one month at a time yeah but again he pro and that's another reason why i don't think it was with malice i think he was doing what his mother did okay my mother paid for a year in advance i'm gonna just go ahead and pay a year in advance you know what i mean i think he was just following what his mother did so but that's just my opinion i don't know these people child does he have a roommate? I, probably not. Probably not. I mean, he might have friends that hang out, but he he probably ain't no room. He don't have no room. Um, all right, but that's Wendy Williams. Larry Reed has dropped his lawsuit. This goes back to what we talked about with Simone the other day. Remember what Simone said? If y'all were here for Girl Is That Legal, if you weren't, go watch the go catch the replay. What Simone said that she said that it really isn't in Larry Reed's best interest to sue his accuser. Remember, she said that because there's that law that Larry Reed could ultimately lose, not because he's guilty, but because of the law, the way the law is written. And because what she said, a, a pub, the public good or something like that. I forget the language. I forget the legal term. And she even said that that probably isn't in, it probably wasn't in his best interest to move forward with the lawsuit. Well, he dropped the lawsuit. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to twist it and turn it. As a matter of fact, uh, Tasha K said that she was going live at 8.30 on Bego to discuss Larry Reed and the bombshell. So I'm sure that's what her, her live is about, is to talk about Larry Reed and why he really why he really dropped this lawsuit. Um, I think Larry Reed dropped the lawsuit because, well, I don't know. Let me not. I don't know. I don't know why he dropped the lawsuit. Yet. But he dropped the lawsuit. But he dropped it without prejudice meaning if he want to bring it back he can bring it back now what the let me read y'all what the exact document says because i don't think it's 
what everybody says it is. Okay, thank you, um, Mystic um, Rain. I got your email, babe. Thank you. I'm going to probably order everything this weekend. So the candle, um, the candle, don't I, wait a minute, hold on. We're on day four. I already ordered the makeup palette. Day two was the, what was day two? Oh, shit. I got to go look at my list. Day two, the day one was the palette. Day two was, no, day two was the candle. So we're on day three? Are we on day three or day four? Oh, God. I done lost train with my own, my own count. I have it written down, y'all, but damn it. Okay, hold on. Day one was Abby's palette. Day two was the candle. Day three. What was day three? Because we're on day four, right, y'all? Or are we only on day three? Oh, God. Y'all. We're on day three because Authentically Young won day two. Mystic Rain won day four. The book. Thank you. Oh, God. I wrote it down, y'all, but I don't have my list in front of me. But I did, I did write it down. I just don't have it in front of me. Okay, we're on day four. I'm about to pull the name in a minute. I'm about to pull the name in a minute because we're almost done. We are almost done. All right. But, yeah, I y'all know if I can find it, Um, if, if somebody recorded the Bigo and I can find it, I'll talk to y'all about it. But I was not going over the Bigo to hear what Lion K had to say, child. I wasn't. Oh, she also did an interview with um, Mr. La Truth. Remember we talked about Miss La Truth earlier this week? Well, he did. she did a sit-down interview with Mr. La Truth, um, and I don't know where she's going to post that because, you know, she everywhere except for YouTube these days. So I don't know where she's going to post that interview, but I probably won't talk about that interview because I probably don't care that much about it. All right. Last but not least, this is just a little... Hold on, let me... This last story is just a little kiki, child. It's a little kiki. This is an example of, I told you three. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gray. So we're on day four. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. So it was the book, the candle, the book, and now Sincerely Yours, Nadia. Sincerely Yours, Nadia. So I say I have to say I'm ordering everything this weekend. So the candle, the book, and Sincerely Yours, Nadia, your gift, it will be this weekend. Okay. All right. So the other night on uh, Instagram Live, Natalie Nunn was promoting Baddie South with Krishan Rock. And Krishan Rock felt like Natalie had disrespected her. And so she slapped Natalie on the live. Now Natalie mad talking about some she's a wild animal and it need to be tamed and it's getting out of hand. Listen, it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Girl, y'all have let Krishan act a fool all over baddies, all over Zeus, all over wherever. Now all of a sudden she's out of control. Now all of a sudden it's a problem because she hit you. Child, ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun, child. Uh-uh, now where's the video? It's all over, honey. Go down to the, to the shade room. It's all over. It was a couple of days ago. This might have happened. What's today? Thursday. I think this might have happened like Tuesday. Child, let me see if I can find it. Krishan says she felt disrespected. All right, here's the. All right, let's see who it belongs to. Oh, it belongs to Zara. Zara won. Zara. So, Zara, if you're in the bushes, she normally drops down though. Bizarre, if you're catching a replay of your In the Bushes love, you have won something from Sincerely Yours Nadia's website. Um, so email me day four, the 12 Days of Christmas giveaway day four. Um, again, you guys don't have to give me y'all government name. I just need a valid address so I can send it. Um, so please, when you get a chance, do that. And again, I have to remember to put it on my community wall. I keep forgetting to put it on my community wall, but I'll, I'll remember um, Zara is day four. All right. 
let me get ready to get out of here, you guys. Um, like I said, if I can find that big old live, and if it's something worth talking about, child, I'll talk to y'all about it. If not, I'll catch y'all on the other side. Oh, and thank you for the people who said I should review Riches. Baby, I watched that first episode. I was here for it. The review is up. If y'all, Riches is a new show alert, new show alert, new show alert. Go on down to, um, I got review, uh, episode one up. And I, um, I'm going to put episode, I'm almost done, halfway done watching episode two. Um, and I'm almost done blood and water. I'm on episode, it's only seven episodes and I'm on episode... I just finished what yes last night i finished watching episode four so i probably finished that well that's a lot because i'm going out of town this weekend um uh, uh tracy said we're gonna have to retire the, the box because it don't act right <laughs> start watching harry and megan new i don't want to watch i don't care <sighs> all right abby i try to watch it but i promise you i don't care I'm not interested. I'm not even being funny. I'm really not. I like Harry and Meghan, but I'm not interested in six episodes about nothing dealing with their life. I'm not. I'm not. Sorry. All right, y'all, let me get out of here. I will talk to y'all later. Peace. Um, It's on Prime, Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, you have it. Or Fire Stick. Bye, y'all.